Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. Welcome to our evening services for Sunday, June the 23rd. We will sing several songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be enlightening and uh, uh, edifying to all of you. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the title of the song and the number that it is in our book. Uh, if you don't have the book or you can Google the song, Desire to Sing Along With Us, um, feel free to do so. The first song that we're going to sing is number 172. The title of the song is I Just Came to Praise the Lord. 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 I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to thank the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to love the Lord. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to love the Lord. Number 533, I am a sheep. <clears throat> I am a sheep. 533. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd, watching over my soul, my soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. And when the wind blows, he is my shelter, and when I'm lost and alone, He rescues me. And when the lion comes, He is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. We are his children, and he is our Father, watching over our soul. Great is his love for his sons and his daughters, watching wherever we go. And when the winds blow, he is my shelter, and when he lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. The song before the Lord's Supper is number 176, 
176, O Lamb of God. O Lamb, uh, Lamb of God. <clears throat> Your only Son, no, no sin, sin to hide, hide but, but you, you have sent Him from Your side to walk upon this guilty side. And to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They left and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud. And sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side To be led by your staff and rod And to be called the Lamb of God O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God I love the lonely Lamb of God Oh, watch me in his precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. As it tells us in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. And so we observe the Lord's Supper on this first day of the week. We do so because on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He met with his disciples and he explained the ceremony and the memorial of the Lord's Supper, which has come down through the ages to us today. He told them to break bread, that the bread would be representative of his body. He told them to drink the fruit of the vine, representative of the blood that he shed. As we look at the body of Jesus, uh, we understand that uh, his body was racked in pain as he was sacrificed for our sins. As we partake of the fruit of the vine, we remember the blood that he shed as innocent a sacrifice as there ever was. And so as we gather about his table and we take these emblems, help us as we take the bread uh, to remember Jesus's body. Help us as we take the cup to remember the blood that he shed for us. Let's pray for the bread. Our God, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to leave your right hand. We're so grateful that he came here in the form of a man, that he taught and he preached, and he explained to people the way they should live. And then finally, uh, he brought a new covenant to us, the new covenant of his sacrifice. And so as we partake of the bread, Help us to remember the body, racked in pain, that hung on the cross for each one of us. We pray this in his whole, most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood for us. We're so grateful that uh, we come to understand the meaning of this blood. We know uh, that blood is that life-giving substance that uh, flows through our bodies, that uh, keeps us alive. And as Jesus' blood uh, 
poured out from his body. His life also ebbed away from him. I just pray that as we partake, that we remember uh, the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having concluded the Lord's Supper, also on the first day of the week, we are called to lay by and store. We are to lay by and store uh, that which we have been prospered with. And so it's time to do a reality check. It's time to do some introspection. How much have we indeed prospered? Has we Have we prospered to the point that we are willing to be sacrificial givers, to give of our means and to give cheerfully. We remember the widow who gave those two small coins. Uh, it was all that she had. And as uh, we give back, we're not asked to give back every bit that we have. We're asked to give back that which we have prospered. Uh, when we do that, we remember that all good things come from the Lord and that we, but as we give, return them to him. Let's pray over the giving. <coughs> Our Lord and Savior, we just thank you for the privilege that we have to give. We thank you that uh, we can give with an open heart, with an open mind, and understand that it's a privilege. We understand that the church has a mission here on earth. We pray that those that are in charge of utilizing these funds will utilize them, them in such a way that uh, uh, the word will be spread, that sinners would come to you. And we just pray that those that are in need can be helped. We just pray that our giving would be sacrificial, just as Jesus' giving of his life was sacrificial. I pray this prayer as we give in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song that we'll sing is number 765. 765. Pardon me. 763. 763. The title of the song is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. I'm sorry. It's Oh, Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. I'm a little confused this morning. It's been a long week. <laughs> oh, Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. 763. O oh, Master, let me walk with Thee In lowly paths, hope serve us free Tell me Thy secret and help me bear The strain of toil, the fret of care Help me the slow of high new moon By some clear winding word of love Teach me the way with thee to stay And guide them in the homeward way in hope that sends a shining ray Far down the future's broadening way In peace that only thou canst give With thee, O Master, let me our song service. I hope you were uplifted. I was, but for those of you that know me, you know how much I enjoy singing and how much I enjoy praising our precious God. 
if you were present this morning at our services, uh, yeah, I let you know that the title of my lesson this evening would be The Lamb in the Book of Revelation. Hence, we sang a couple of songs about sheep and the Lamb of God. And uh, hopefully this will have some meaning to you. You know, when we think of lambs, uh, we think of these gentle animals. You know, we think that Mary had a little lamb his fleece was white as snow. And and the lamb was gentle because Mary, this child, I guess, had this lamb. Uh, we, we look at the lamb as uh, gentle, innocent, and without power. Without power to find uh, their own way. Without power to even defend or protect themselves. And that is true as lambs are herded. Uh, they have a shepherd, and the shepherd leads them to where they are to go. With that in mind, the gentle kindness and sacrifice of the lamb is not lost in the book of Revelation. One sees the sacrificial lamb when the saved are said, Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, to have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Okay, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So he is the lamb. But in this case, it's not the shepherd leading the lamb. It's the lamb leading the way. It's the lamb who leads those who has suffered for their loyalty to the Lord. Revelation 7, 17 says that the lamb leads them to the springs of the water of life. And so, as we look at the lamb in the book of Revelation, we're going to look at the lamb of a different nature. The, the first indication is in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation. In the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, uh, there is one sitting on a throne, and that one sitting on a throne has a scroll. And no one is found who could open the scroll. And so John begins to cry in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. He says, One of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. All right, we know who that was, don't we? The Lion of Judah, of the Root of David. He's talking about Jesus, of course. But listen to this. John turned to see the lion, but instead, in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, he saw a lamb. And in verse 6, it said the lamb was standing as if slain, having seven horns. Now we've got a little problem here. Lambs don't have horns. When a lamb gets horns, it is an adult sheep, not an innocent young lamb. And so we are going to look at some of the aspects of the lamb as seen in the book of Revelation. First, because he saw the lamb and the lamb had seven horns, it tells us that the lamb has power. Horns in the Bible have always been synonymous with power. So not only does it have horns, but it has seven horns. And if we are to remember correctly, seven is one of those kind of perfect numbers in the New Testament, uh, especially in apocalyptic literature like Revelation. Throughout the rest of the book, one sees the Lamb's power. And what a contrast to how we view lambs normally, you know, as gentle and innocent without any power. 
the lamb, Jesus, has power. The, the lamb is led to places, but we find in uh, Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 to 6, he not only had the ability to open the book that told what was going to happen in the future, not only did he have power to see the coming events, but he also had the book of life. He had the book of life. In the Bible, this is a book that lists those who have been saved by being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Chapter 7, verse 14. And not only those, let me, let me rephrase that, only those whose names are written in the book of life can enter the eternal city. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 27. The, the, that book, that book of life belongs to the Lamb. He has the authority to determine who enters into eternal joy or who is cast into eternal fire. Chapter 20, verses 11 to 15. Now, upon his ascension into heaven, the apostles were the men that Jesus selected to carry the gospel into all the world. And on that first day of Pentecost, 50 days, after Passover, 50 days after Jesus resurrected from the dead, they were told, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, to carry the word to all the world. He gave them the power to accomplish that task. So, number one, Jesus not only has, the lamb not only has power, but the lamb has authority. Now, again, Normally, we cast the lamb in this innocent uh, characteristic, and, and we also almost characterize the lamb as, as being dumb, but not so of the lamb in the book of Revelation. The lamb John saw had the ability to open the seven seals, which revealed what was going to have happen in the future. Chapter 6, verse 1. Although the, the book of Revelation does not specifically say that Jesus will judge us, it is replete in the New Testament. Uh, he is the one who will judge. If you go to Acts chapter 17 and 31 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10, the idea of the lamb being the judge is seen in the Bible because he is in charge of the book of life. And he is the one who is the determiner whether people will be rewarded with eternal life. So the lamb has power, the lamb has authority, and the lamb has the knowledge of the future. Now again, uh, if we remember, the lamb doesn't even know how to find its own food. And so the shepherd has to bring the lamb to the places where he can get food. However, in the book of Revelation, the lamb is a leader. Again, normal lambs are led by the shepherd. Uh, but, uh, and by the way, we even talk about the, the lost uh, sheep. In the book of Revelation, instead of being lost, the lamb is the leader. He leads, if we look in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, he leads the 144,000 who are Christians. And it says, specifically, Revelation 14 and verse 4, follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And so we have a juxtaposition, don't we? Normally, the lamb is led to things, but the lamb of the book of Revelation, the lamb that is Jesus, is a leader. With that, again, characterizing the lamb as gentle, 
when the sixth seal is broken, terror was described. And the scene closes when the wicked said in the mountains to the rocks, fall on me and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who is able to stand? In the Lamb, terror may be faced also. And it's no coincidence that later on in uh, chapter 15 and verse 3, it says, They sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Jesus explained that when he walked on the earth. He says, narrow is the way that leads to the kingdom of God. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Jesus knew that this would happen. He, he told them, he told them that they had to live godly lives if they were going to walk down that narrow path instead of that broad path. And finally, we look at the Lamb's position in eternity. In Revelation chapters 22, uh, 21 and 22, several descriptions are given of the Lamb in eternity. 22.1 says, The throne of God and of the Lamb. And in 21.22, John says, I saw the temple in it, for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. And finally, in verse 23, John said, The city has no need of sun or of moon to shine on it. The glory of God has illumined it. And you ready? Its lamp is the Lamb. Jesus told us that he was the light of the world. And that extends into eternity. That there's no darkness in heaven. It's always daytime. And that eternity is illuminated by the Lamb. As we complete this lesson this evening, it, it's so easy and by, by the way, it is important to see Jesus and see him as that gentle, innocent lamb who was sacrificed. If Jesus had not been gentle, if he had not been humble, if he had not been innocent, his sacrifice would have been meaningless. However, along with that, we should never, ever, ever dismiss the power of the Lamb. The picture of the Lamb is portrayed in the great and final book in our Bibles. He's not just our sacrifice, but he has the power. He has the authority in our lives. He as he is our leader. He's the one that enables us to overcome whatever enemy we face. Now we're told, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, that no temptation has overcome a man, that he hasn't given us the power with which to resist that temptation. When Satan brought Jesus out to the precipice and, and he wanted Jesus to denounce who he was, Jesus was able to defend his faith and who he was through the power of the scriptures. When he said, it is written, you shall have no other gods before me, before you. And so with that in mind, we, we see what the lamb is really all about. It was the gentle and innocent lamb that was sacrificed. But the lamb that is now at the right hand of God is the lamb of power and authority, 
so much authority when that when Jesus comes back, he will judge us. When he ascended into heaven, he said, all authority has been given unto me on heaven and on earth. That That's so crystal clear. That gentle, innocent Savior, that humble Savior that was sacrificed for us has the power and the authority. He has the knowledge of the future. He has... Uh, uh, the leadership wrapped up in himself. And is it so amazing that how uh, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is talked about in our scriptures? I hope this lesson has brought to light some things that are important to all of us. All of us need to desire to be children of the Lamb. When we are children of God, we take Jesus into our lives. We proclaim to all that we believe that Jesus in, is indeed the son of the true and living God. And with that, we obey God's plan of salvation. Through the written word, we can find and believe the truth of God and of Jesus Christ. And when we confess him as our Lord and Savior, and that he is the Son of God, and repent of our former ways, we then are baptized to rise in a newness of life. If you have not followed that plan, then you're not one of the lambs. You're not of the lamb. You're not of Jesus Christ. If you need to come to Jesus tonight, get in touch with one of us and we will be ready to help you in any way we can. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we are able to see the truth of your word. And as we did a study in the book of Revelation this evening, we come to understand what the Lamb of God actually is. That Jesus came and left the right hand of God, took the form of a bondservant, took the form of a human, felt everything as a man as we felt, as we feel even today, was tempted, yet did not sin. We are called to be Christ-like in our lives. We are called to bear the fruit of the Spirit, we are called to be uh, Christ-like in our attitudes. I just pray that we will do that in our lives, that uh, as Christians, we would trust and obey the words uh, of Jesus Christ that are brought down to us in his Holy Spirit-inspired book. We're so grateful for you, dear God, for Jesus and his sacrifice. And we just pray that as we conclude this evening, they will remember how important all of that is to our lives, especially to our eternal lives. Be with us. Continue to bless us and comfort us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God.